Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here today we have a college exam question um, from the 2020 Hokkaido University that's located in Japan. Uh, if we let a be a positive constant, uh, assume that a differentiable function f of x satisfies the following condition for all real x, uh, such that our range is lies strictly in between 0 and 1, and that we have a definite integral from 0 to x of f prime of t divided by f of t times 1 minus f of t dt is equal to some linear function a times x. Also, given the given is um, f of 0 is equal 1 over 3. So this question is split into two parts. First, we want to find what f of x is equal to such that it satisfies our given condition. And the second is to find the area s of a of the region um, enclosed or surrounded by y equals f of x, the x-axis, x equals 0, and x equals 1. Moreover, we also want to find the limit as a approaches 0 from the right of s of a. So I think this is actually a good way to like test the capabilities of how much of what you learn in calculus, especially that, you know, this is a, you know, college entrance exam. Depending on where you are in the world, you know, um, universities are required, require um, applicants to actually take, you know, the um, exams to see if you're actually qualified to uh, meet the requirements of whatever um, university are looking for. Uh, depending on where you are, because uh, specifically, like my school, for example, doesn't actually do um, like the entrance exams. We just actually have to like submit like at the time like SATs or ACT scores. So depends on where you are in the world and where you're applying. So I think this is actually a very good um, question to you know test that sort of capability and limit of what you know. So personally, for me, I think this is actually a uh, easier question in terms of we're thinking things in terms of analysis. But for one. Um, if we're trying to find a function f of x, it's actually pretty straightforward to see that if we just start with the, um, what our you know given condition of this integral, then we actually just you know rewrite some things. Then if we're able to actually easily integrate that, then we can actually find what we want. Then there's the follow-up question for um, you know part two, which is what you found from part a, and then you know plugging that from your results into here, and then see what else you can find and observe. Um, so I think um, this is actually going to be uh, an interesting question to actually work through. So um, let me know if you if there are any other um, college entrance exam questions that you think that I should you know um, solve on video. I think that, um, I think that's something um, cool to implement into like my format. So anyways, let's actually just jump right in. Let's start off with the pr I'm just call this proof of one. So that just says that this is actually we're going to start um, evaluating find what f of x is going to equal to. So we're going to start off with this integral over here. And I think it's worth interesting to note that what we can do is um, because f of f prime of t is on the numerator and we can you know factor that out if we want to. So we just have to figure out what um, f of t and 1 minus f of t. Um, you can see that we can actually do some partial fraction decomposition. That's actually the method that we're going to do to help, you know, make integrating this a little bit easier to, in order to find what the function is that we want to find. So if after applying all this, you'll get that for um, partial fraction decomposition, we'll have uh, 1 over f of t. Then we add this with 1 divided by uh, 1 minus f of t then dt. And so now what I can do is let's actually perform a little u substitution. So let's suppose that if uh, u is equal to f of t, then we can see that du is equal f prime of t. Then of course we could just plug all the substitution back. Um, f, prime of d, f prime of t dt, that's going to get rid of itself, so that would be du. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the bounds yet, so I'll just put this like it's an indefinite integral. Then so we just plug in, so um, back for substitutions of u, so it's 1 over u, and then add this with 1 divided by uh, 1 minus u du. Then um, performing all that necessary, um, finding its antiderivative, and then plugging in u for back, uh, we're going to get, so this is ln of f of t, then subtract with ln of 1 subtract f of t. And then we just evaluate this from our bounds from 0 to x, which is pretty straightforward to see that after plugging all this, we'll have the natural log of f of x and subtract the natural log of 1 minus um, f of x. Then um, subtract. So now I'm actually just going to distribute all the minus. So this will be a minus and then later a plus. After plugging in 0, so we have ln of f of 0. Then now this is add with the natural log of 1 minus f of zero. And then so far, uh, we all, so we actually have the condition that f of zero is going to equal one over three. So let's actually make that little um, notion over here for these values. 
that means over here what we have is we're going to have um, this is going to be ln of uh, 1 over 3 and then over here this is actually going to be ln of 1 minus 1 over 3 or 2 over 3 so now with this um, with these operations we can perform an actual log so in other words this is minus and then plus then it actually we could put this under form of division so in other words this is actually going to equal what we have is the natural log of f of x then minus ln of 1 minus f of x and then this will be um, add this with um, ln of 2 and then that actually says that um, this is actually just going to equal our um, integral over here. So let's see, this is so far what we have here. This left hand side is going to equal this right hand side. And then um, if we actually apply a little bit of uh, logarithmic property, so we have a minus, so it's under division and a plus, so that's um, multiplication. So in other words, we have that this is going to be ln of two times f of x all this being divided by 1 minus f of x. But it's also given that um, this left-hand side of the definite integral is going to equal the linear function a times x. So let's actually put that, um, set that equality over here. Then it's straightforward to see that, we, um, that we're trying to solve what our function f of x is going to equal to. Then all this algebra and then the manipulation is actually straightforward to see on um, how we can find f of x. So obviously, um, you can see that if I just take the e base of both sides, so this will just, the ln's will just cancel. So it's just two times f of x divided by one minus f of x is going to equal e to the power a times x. Now, if I just multiply one minus f of x to both sides, so I'm gonna move this line over here. So we have two times f of x is going to equal, and I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna distribute the um, e to the ax into everything over here. So this will be minus f of x, then e to the ax. I'll add f of x to both sides. So this way we get f of x by itself. And then I'll factor that f of x. So this will be f of x. Um, then just multiply by e to the ax plus 2 equals e to the ax. Okay. And then just divide this uh, quantity by both sides. And we see that our uh, we have just completed the first part of the question. And to find that function f of x is going to equal e to the power a times x divided by e to the power a times x at this with 2. All right. And just like that, we have found our um, function f of x such that it satisfies the given condition over here, given as follow. And then um, you can actually just plug in the f of x back into this equation to see if you actually um, matches as a sort of verification. And of course, if you want to plug zero in, so zero, um, that means over here, this is going to be zero, um, e to the power zero is going to be one. Then this is one plus two, one over three. There we have it. Our function f of x is satisfies as follow. So with that, let's actually move on to solving the second equation. Here, we're going to solve part two of our question. That is to find the area S of A of the region surrounded by y equals f of x x axis x equals zero and x equals one and later we want to find that limit as it approaches zero from the right of s of a so for the previous clip we have found that our function f of x is equal to e to the power ax divided by e to the power ax at this two so with that let's actually find our area so if we take a look at how the um the enclosed region is going to look like then we can see that we actually found what our definite intro is going, going to look like so s of a specifically so obviously the top bounds are bound by f of x and the x-axis, and then our endpoints are between zero and one. So we can see that our definite integral is written as follows. Zero, one, f of x dx, or in other words, we can write this as zero to one of e to the ax divided by e to the ax, add this for two, then dx. And so from here, um, this is straightforward to see that, again, we can actually perform another, um, we can perform a u sub. I said another just because we did the same thing in the previous um, question. So we just let u equals um, e to the ax, add this with two, then du is just going to equal a to the power, a times e to the power ax uh, dx. Then we can actually just divide the a to both sides. So that'll come out of the integral outside. So one over a, and then let me just treat this as an indefinite integral. So let's see the um, ex and dx will cancel. So this is just du and then divided by u. In other words, so we have one over a, then the natural log of u, plug this back in. So this will be e to the ax, add this with two, 
and then evaluate from zero to one. And so this is straightforward that if we just plug in our um, our, calc our bounds into here, so we have plug this in for zero or x, so e to the a and then plus two, and then plug in zero, so this is what, one plus two divided by three. So do the subtraction, so this is under the division um, for that argument, and so we simplify this out with natural law properties to see that our area is going to, e our s of a is going to equal one divided by a, multiplied by the natural log of e to the power a, add this with two, and then divide it by three. Okay, and so with that, we actually found what our S of A area is going to equal to. Uh, Left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, underlined in brown. But now the last thing we have to do is we need to find the limit as A approaches um, zero from the right of our S of A function. And in other words, this um, take this limit over here. Uh, this is actually interesting to see that if you were to take the limit as it approaches zero from the right, of course, for zero then over here, this is actually just gonna be undefined, it's like one over zero. Um, it's actually going to, you know, steadily approach infinity if we think about this in terms. Um, same thing over here, so e to the zero plus two, so that's three divided by three, element of one is just zero. So if we think of this as a zero over zero indeterminate form, but you know, if we could do this with local toss rule, we can, but that's not the method that I went for. It's that we, um, Instead, what I did was more of, um, we can just rewrite the expression a little bit differently and then apply a couple formulas to actually, um, in terms of limits specifically, that we can actually utilize to help um, find our, you know, value of our limit. So with that, let's, um, if we actually do a little bit of rewriting, so we see that S of A, I can write this as a new limit, or rather, we're not taking the limit yet, but I'll write, rewrite our S of A function. As you can see, we can see that I can write that as e to the power a, then subtract 1 divided by 3a, and this is multiplied by 3 divided by e to the power a subtract 1. Then I just take the natural log, and I'm actually going to rewrite the um, inside expression, so I write that as 1 plus um, e to the power a subtract 1, then divided by um, 3. Then with that, there's actually some um, formulas that we will be using. So let me just write a little note here. So note that we have two limits that we're going to be using. So the first limit is that if it's, um, x approaches infinity, you know, for some value x, we have that e to the power x subtract 1 divided by x is going to equal 1. And then the second formula we'll be using is that the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of 1 plus x divided by x is going to equal 1 as well. As you can see with these inputs, it actually follows that same format. So if, we, um, if I were to take the limit as a approaches 0 plus of s of a, okay, so that means I'll just write this as the same thing just like before. Okay, so with this, so now let's actually apply some of those formulas that we, um, we just had. So we see that um, for this um, limit over here, we can actually see the input. So supposedly this input we have is e to the power a minus one over three for x and that substitution if we think about this, then divide by x, or in this case, this input. So it's just basically where I just flip the reciprocal and we can see that the inside parentheses of our input over here, this is actually just going to equal one. So all that's left is we gotta calculate this integral or this limit over here. So e to the a minus one, then if you think of it like this, so in this situation we have a and then a, there's a three, so I'll just factor out the one over third outside, so then this actually just comes down to just one over three. Then if I just perform all that multiplication, we see that um, the limit as, um, let me underline this, the limit as a approaches zero plus of s of a is going to equal one over three. And just like that, we have found our limit, and therefore we've actually completed this entire question being asked. Now what our f of x function is, right here, we found what our um, area of s of a is, this is what it's going to look like, and then we took the limit as a approaches zero plus from the right, or not zero plus from the right, you could say that zero plus or zero from the right of s of a is indeed just going to equal one over three. And there we have it. Um, if you actually got this on the first try, nice, congratulations on that if you actually took this exam. So great, uh, kudos to you. Um, yeah, again, let me know if um, there's any um, entrance, entrance, entrance exam math questions that you would like me to cover. I'm actually trying to like utilize that into more videos instead of just covering specifically contest problems because I feel like there's more out there that I feel like it'd be interesting to show off, you know? So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.